Hello, my name is Aaron Bailey, and I'm the Voice for Product Manager here at Phone Suite. What we're going to do in today's video is look at the Quick Start Guide for 4.1. So let's dive in. The first thing we need to do is change the installer password. So in our system, once we log in, we'll go to installer, uh, go to the users page, then click on installer. And then from here, we can simply add, add the new password. This password should not be shared with anyone, including Phone Suite. Once you enter the password, simply click Save. Next, we're going to set the system name. So this is done from the settings page. So if we click on settings here, you'll notice the system name right now is Hotel Name City State, and that's where this is. So you want to remove all of this, you don't need the brackets, and just include the, the hotel's name, city, state, and also, if you have it, include the property code, uh, sometimes called a Marsha code here. Next, set time zone. Time zone is just a couple down from this. So right here, we can set the time zone now in the settings page. We don't have to log in via SSH. Next, it says set default trunk. This is something you'll want to consider now. You may not be able to do so right at this moment, uh, but I wanted to show you down here, setting 76, this is the default trunk to use for outbound routes when there isn't anything else designated, when you've told it to use the default route. So why do you need to set this, and what is SIP 9999? Well, let's talk about this. In VoiceWare 4.1, we have added some outbound routes for, to the system. So if we go to the dial plan and we go to outbound routing, we will see that there are 194 different outbound routes preloaded to the system. Because these routes are preloaded, we have to set a trunk, which is our system default that we saw just previously. The system default is a sort of a placeholder SIP trunk that you can find under the devices page. The idea is that you will take and edit this default SIP trunk and enter the credentials of, of whatever SIP provider that you're using. Doing that will then make all of these outbound routes usable without doing much else. There is, however, one more thing you need to do. You'll need to go into your search and search for local. And we've added local routes. However, we don't know where the system is going to be installed, and so they have a placeholder area code of 999, which will obviously need to be changed for your local conditions. So if your local area code is 303, like it is here in Colorado, you would edit all three of these and change the 999 to 303. Notice that this one assumes that you dialed the one first. This one assumes that you dialed just the trunk access code and no one. This one assumes that you just dialed nine and a seven digit number. And as you'll notice over here, we're prepending the 1999 which again, you'll want to change and replace with your local area code, for example, 303. Other than that, all of these outbound routes should become usable as long as you assign them to an appropriate functioning trunk. If you don't like these outbound routes and would prefer to go back to the defaults that were shipped with previous versions, you can do so by deleting all and then adding defaults. And this will get you back to a standard default list that you had previously. Note that you'll also want to change your outbound rates. The outbound rates are more granular. So if you're going to use the standard default routes, you're going to want to also delete all of these newer rates and load the default rate table. Note, once you do that, you can't go back to the more granular ones listed here without restoring a factory default. Restoring the factory default will, of course, clear out anything else you've done such as setting the installer password or modifying your trunks and set you back to a default. So we have the default trunk. We have edited the local outbound routes. And next we're going to add DIDs. Now this may seem strange. This is not the flow that we used previously, but there's a good reason for it. So back in our system, we're going to go to dial plan and we're going to go to add extension. And if we select DID, notice that our pattern changes from a single pattern box to a more of a freeform text box. What we can do is then we can add a listing 
of non-sequential DIDs. Previously, you could add DIDs in bulk, but they all have to be sequential. Now, you can simply add them as free-form text, and you can just copy and paste from the customer's bill or whatever information you have and add them all to the system. We also recommend that you point them all by default to zero. You may not want, the, want them all staying pointed to the zero operator call group. In fact, you may not want to have any of them eventually pointed to zero, and that's okay. We're just going to do this as a placeholder for now to add them to the system, and I'll show you why here in just a moment. So I'm going to take these four DIDs, and I'm just going to click Add. And then once we do that, you'll see that these, these DIDs are all here in the system and pointed to zero. Next, we're going to add users to the system. As outlined here, we have add DIDs, create users. And this is a standard process. You're going to want to add your system users, for example, the front desk, the GM. This is where you just go and add all, all of those users. The process here hasn't changed much. Note that ACLs now, we can denote users as having access to specific pages. So if you want to have a user that has just access to their rooms and devices page, for example, you can do that. But down here, under Add Extension, you will want to add an extension for your user, say their extension is 300. But the reason we added the DIDs to the system comes into focus now, because we can then assign DIDs that are in our system. Doing this just uh, makes it a little bit easier uh, for your entire flow. If you add all of the DIDs to the system first, you're not only guaranteed to have them all in there and not forget any, but then it's easier later on to just select from the list the ones that need to be added, and you're not trying to copy and paste DIDs uh, into the system. Now, you can do that, of course. If I say new, I could copy and paste a new DID, and it would assign it to this extension. But we found it just a little bit easier if you add them all first, then you can pick them from the assign list, and then you have less copy-paste to do because you're not doing them one at a time. You did them all in a bulk earlier. They're all in the system, and now you can select. And you would continue doing that until you have all of your users added. Then there's one last thing to do here um, in our quick start guide, uh, which is to consider the call groups. So uh, one of the defaults we add to the system is an operator call group. The operator call group, of course, because there were no users in the system, has no members in it. So you'll want to, after you're adding, add, added all of your front desk users and, and GM and all that, you'll want to go and edit the operator call group and change two things. You want to, A, obviously add users to the call group. Notice here we don't have any because we haven't added any devices. But you're also going to want to change the default failover number. So the, def the fail extension is right now 888, which if you're not familiar, 888 is a special extension we set up on all systems where if you dial that, it will read back your extension. This is very handy, especially when you're installing the system to make sure that extensions have been and, and rooms have been set up correctly. There is one thing that I want to highlight here. This is more of an advanced step, but it's the reason that the fail extension for the operator call group is 888. Why did we pick that? Well, here's what you can do. If you're installing a series two cabinet, you can go into the settings page and change the class of service for all extensions on the system to ring down to zero. Well, that's a little strange. As you see here, zero is our operator call group. So what you do is you can set all of the ring downs for all the phones, even room phones, to ring down to zero. If you do that, you can then walk the hotel and in, in the system's current state, when you go to pick up a, a room phone, it will dial zero. There's no one in that call group, so it will immediately fail over to the fail extension, which is, you guessed it, 888. 888 will then read back the extension you're calling from. 
So this is a quick way to do a room walk. You can walk around, pick up the phone, it'll automatically dial the number to read back the extension that, you're, that it thinks you're calling from, and you can quickly and easily verify your room numbering is correct. If you don't have a Series 2, you, you may not or may not be able to do that. Uh, your gateways may be able to be programmed with um, an off-hook e extension, not an automatic dial. Sometimes it's called a, a hotline. Um, other times it's called ring down. And in your gateways, you may just be able to program it to dial 888 directly. You don't have to go through the 0 to 888 uh, uh, flow that we're using here. But on a Series 2, uh, you only have the option to have it dial zero automatically or 911. The last thing I'll note here is something you've probably been wondering about here at the very top of the screen. It says emergency routes have been modified. So once you are done uh, changing your SIP device, again, this is our placeholder device. So you want to go in here and edit this with the credentials of the SIP provider you're using. Once you do that and you test 911 and 9911 to verify that works, you then go and you set your initials here and you click confirm working. And this will record in the system database that uh, you in fact checked to make sure 911 worked, but this is a good reminder that you need to do that. You can't ever leave a job site without testing the 911 works. And that concludes our quick start guide. Uh, you're not completely done setting up the system, obviously. There's still more to do. You may have um, IVRs to set up. You might have um, other things to do. But this should help get you set up as quickly as possible with the most common settings. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions uh, or comments about the system, of course, please contact support, and we would be happy to help you out. Thank you, and good luck setting up your VoiceWare 4.1 systems.